Hey guys, it's Leanna and I'm here today to talk about Best Served Cold by Joe Abercrombie. As previously stated in many a video this year, I am rereading all of the first law books in anticipation of the release of the third and final book in the Age of Madness trilogy, which comes out in September. So in April, I read Best Served Cold. This was nearly my third time reading it. I say nearly because I was rereading it last year and I read nearly all of it. But I didn't quite finish it. And now this for this reread, I started from the beginning again. So it was like for for more than three quarters of it, it was basically my third time through. So that is the perspective from which I will be reviewing it as a person who has read it, loved it, reread it, and still loves it. So Best Served Cold is the first among the standalones. So after the First Law trilogy, Joe Abercrombie wrote a series of standalones that all take place in the world of the First Law that have some characters from the trilogy, have some new characters that overall further the plot of the world in terms of like, you know, the political landscape and that sort of thing. So like you do kind of have to read them in order in that way because like chronologically like the world has been affected by the events of these books. So, you know, wars have been fought and lost and you know, people have been removed from power or have attained power. So like that affects like kind of the game board of the world in that sense, but they aren't like direct sequels to each other other than that. You can start with Besser Cold. You can read this first and only among his books. It is written in a way where you can understand what's going on if you've never read any first law books at all. I don't recommend it. I think all these books read better if you've read them from start to finish, like from the beginning of The Blade itself through chronologically in order of publication, because they do kind of build on each other. They do reference each other. The world is fleshed out more if you've read them all. But you can start here if you just want to start here. And this is a really like thick, heavy edition, so I'm gonna put this down. Quick disclaimer. If you regard it as a spoiler um, to know that a character has survived in order to then be present in Besser of Cold, that is to say like if it's a character from the trilogy and like for them to be in Besser of Cold, they have to have survived the events of the trilogy to be in it. So if you regard like the fact of that as a spoiler, then this video will be mildly spoilery. Um, but that's like the only kind of spoiler that I would say uh, that will be popping up. And again, like nothing specific about what that character does or says in this book, or even what that character, like where they ended up in the trilogy. It's just like the fact that they're alive <laughs> to be in this. If, the, if that's spoilery to you, then FYI. Okay, any whoosies. Yeah, the first time I read Buster Cold, uh, and until I read A Little Hatred, it was my favorite Abercrombie book. Uh, and I, I frequently said, this is my favorite Abercrombie book. I think it's the best one in the first law. Uh, and people would always say, well, can I read that first? And I'd be like, no. And I do, well, I haven't reread The Heroes in Red Country yet. That's next, um, obviously, per the aforementioned plan for the year. I, I think I would still probably say that it's it's the, my favorite of the standalones, that it's the best of the standalones. But oddly, I feel like Best of Cold, unlike the trilogy, is not as fun to reread. Like, it's still a fantastic book. And like, I, I very much enjoy my time with it and very much enjoy rereading any and all first law books because I just like love being in the world of first law. I love Abercrombie's prose. I love the character development. I maintain that Call Shiver's character arc throughout the first law books overall in general, not in any one particular book. His character arc is like one of the best character arcs I've seen in fiction. And uh, Shivers is a prominent character in Besser of Cold. And that's kind of like where he really starts to like catch her attention and really starts to shine and really like come into his own as a character. So I love seeing that because I love the character of Call Shivers. There's a lot of Nik uh, Nikomo Kaska in this book. And he's again, a character that like pops up in the trilogy, but he really gets to shine in Besser of Cold. He's hilarious. He's some of the most quotable quotes, some of the most funny, most hilarious one-liners. He's just like this like chaos energy. He's like the Jack Sparrow of the first law world. And you just, anytime Casca pops up, you're just like, well, this is about to be a riot. <laughs> so there's like, there's a lot that I love about Besser of Cold and there are reasons why I enjoy rereading it. But with Besser of Cold, maybe it's because I loved it so much the first time that maybe I have higher expectations that it's not meeting. But like the trilogy, every time I read it, it grows on me more. The trilogy, every time I reread it, I love it more. Each, the individual books, as well as the arc of the whole trilogy, there's just so much to unpack and so much to rediscover or to newly discover in the trilogy. Best of Cold, this is gonna be a weird thing to say, it's kind of better written, but it's less fun to reread. So Best of Cold, it's a standalone. So like, it's not gonna be like dragging across a trilogy. The, the plot starts and ends in one book. So there's no like plot, like th like threads left hanging. There's no like, I guess we'll find out in the next book or like, where is any of this going? Like it has to be tightly paced 
because it's a revenge thriller that takes place in one book. So like a lot has to happen and all of it does happen. So it is breakneck in its pace and it is very tightly plotted. It's very exciting. It's very funny. It's very intense. It's very violent. It's, it's a lot of things. But for that reason, like... There isn't, so like the trilogy kind of like sneaks up on you with stuff, if that makes sense. Like the first time you'll know, you'll read certain passages, certain scenes, certain you know, entire books and feel like it was good, but you know, like, I don't know what the point of that was, or like, I don't know if there was a point to that, or like, I don't, I don't know that I know what's going on with that. Like, I don't, I don't know why he's telling us about that part, kind of stuff like that, which like the first time through is a negative part of your reading experience. But then when you reread it, because now you know where this goes, then it's like so much fun to like see those parts and be like, oh my God, this part that I thought was pointless was actually like low key setting up this later thing. Like lol, like now rereading it, you know, you sit there going like, I know something you don't know. Like it, it's like a lot of fun to like find these clues and pieces and, and find the groundwork now that you know to look for it. Plus like, I just, you know, Glockta. Every book that doesn't have Glockta, <laughs> Dr. Star. So there's just like, there's a lot of fun to going back and like figuring stuff out and, and picking stuff up that you didn't the first time. Rest of Cold, you're not missing anything, if that makes sense. Like it's not written in a way where you're like confused or off put, like it's written too well. The first time through you pick up on everything that you need to pick up on. You catch all the clues, you catch all the hints. Like you, like the first time through, it's a wild ride and you were with it the entire time. You don't have to now go back and be like, oh, I missed that. But for that reason, rereading it, there's no like added enjoyment to rereading it. Rereading it is fun because it's a good book and it's it's fun to always, it's always fun to read a good book. But it's not like an added layer of enjoyment upon reread because there isn't anything about where the book ends or goes that re like frames or that recontextualizes anything that happens earlier so that a reread would be like oh wow it's so weird reading it you know the second time now that I know etc where this goes or what happens or what this means now the second time through it's like so weird reading it knowing that there's nothing really like that about Best of Cold it doesn't end in a way where you're like mind blown reframed reassess upon reread so rereading it you're just like yeah, these are the same amazing plot beats, the same amazing moments, the same great character beats that I remember from the first time. And they're still great, but they're not like different at all. There's no, there's no different experience upon rereading. It's just, oh yeah, it was a fun ride the first time and it's a fun ride the second time <laughs> and it's a fun ride the third time. <laughs> I feel mild disappointment, I guess, just because like I've been so blown away by how delightful my rereading is of the trilogy where like it just gets better and better every time I read it. I pick up more and more and more little details that I just chew through and eat up. And Best of Cold, I'm like sad that it was the exact same great book and the exact same great experience that I had the first time. That it's not different. <laughs> so it's still a fantastic book and I still really love it. Um, and it is so tightly paced, like especially for anyone that complained or complains or is a fearfully will complain that the trilogy is meandering and seems to go nowhere and spends a lot of time kind of like off-roading and you're like, where is any of this going? And there's a lot of downtime. Like if you feel the way about the trilogy, Best of Cold is the book for you because Best of Cold is like non-stop break neck. <laughs> it has a lot crammed into this book, a lot that has to happen because it's a revenge story. So like it's a very clear plot like we know what we're doing here a character has been wronged and they are now seeking revenge and revenge is being taken and like obviously there's you know stuff that goes wrong there's conflicting interests the plans have to change because you know things happen you learn new information about the people who you know revenge is being sought on and you know there's a lot of twists and turns along the way that's not to say there aren't but it's a very clear you know this is what we are doing and this is the plot and this is the these are the beats we have to hit. These are the people that have to die. <laughs> and there's fantastic new characters. I don't, I feel like I'm being hard on this book. I still gave it five stars and I still would continue to give it five stars and still say it's probably the best of the standalones. An amazing character work again, Shivers, because you know him from the trilogy. It's amazing to see him really like come into his own in this book uh, and, and Casca as well, as I already mentioned, but like the introduction of uh, Friendly 
is like such a bizarre inclusion and it's like a fun new experiment in terms of character work that Abercrombie's doing and it's like fun to watch him play with yet another new type of character that we haven't seen before. The character of Morvir is also really interesting. A wily scheming creature but that is entirely different. It doesn't feel like oh this is just you know like a rehashing of what we've seen before. They're entirely unique individuals as they always are in Abercrombie books. Each person is a person to themselves. They don't feel like oh well you're just like the young version of this or oh you're just the girl version of that or whatever like they are all such unique individuals and such fascinating complicated like motivations and thought processes and their own like the ways they justify themselves to themselves or to each other or the way that they choose not to justify themselves like absolutely fascinating character work as always as usual and it is incredible to see every time that I read it I'm always blown away by it no matter how many times I read it so like, it's a fantastic book. I don't want to say like, I feel like I've made it, I've like poo-pooed it a bit. I just feel like it's fantastic the first time through. It's not one of these where I'm like, you know, it's, it grows on you over time. It's not this thing that you slowly fall deeper and deeper in love with. You're going to be in love with the first time through and then just like maintain love. <laughs> It doesn't, there's like nowhere to go up from there. Like it's, it's absolutely fantastic the first time through and remains the same level of fantastic, but also the same type of fantastic every time you read it. Hope that makes sense. Uh, anyway, let me know in the comments down below if you're a fan of Abercrombie, if you've read the standalones, if you now plan to pick up the standalones, if this review was helpful to you at all, or if it wasn't, um, let me know that too. <laughs> I post videos on Saturdays, other random times as well, but I'll say Saturdays, so like and subscribe, join my Patreon if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you when I see you. Bye.